Example 3.7. In this example, a plain wall is composed of two materials, A and B. The thickness and the thermal conductivity of both materials is given. Material A has a uniform heat generation, while material B has no heat generation. The inner surface of material A is well insulated, while the outer surface of material B is cooled by water. The goal of the problem is to sketch the temperature distribution that exists on the composite under the given conditions, and then we need to determine the temperature of the insulated surface, T0, and the temperature of the cooled surface, T2. This is a one-dimensional steady case in which we neglect the resistance between the contact surfaces between A and B, it will maintain constant properties. The first step of the problem is to sketch the temperature distribution that exists in the composite wall under steady conditions. Since material A has a heat generation, the profile of the temperature is going to be parabolic. Since material B has no heat generation, the thermal distribution is going to be linear. Keep in mind that the slope between the interface of material A and material B has to be exactly the same to avoid this continuity. The value of this slope for this case is going to be a ratio between the thermal conductivity of material B and thermal conductivity of material A. The second part of the problem is asking us to find that the temperature value of the insulated surface, T0, and the temperature of the cooled surface, T2. We start by setting up thermal resistances between T1 and T infinity. Notice that we do not set up between T0 and T1 because the temperature distribution between those two points is now linear due to the fact that we have heat generation. The first step is to find out what is the flux going into the circuit. In order to do that, we find out what is the value of Q double prime, which is equal to the heat generated in the material A times the total length that it went across. This value is equal to 75 kilowatts. Once we know the flux, we could say that the flux is going to be equal to the change of temperatures between T2 and T infinity and the resistance between them. Notice that we have convection between those two points, so we simply write 1 minus H. Solving for T2, we find that the temperature of the cool surface is equal to 105 Celsius. The next step is to calculate the value of T0. Unfortunately, we cannot take advantage of thermal resistances to find this value. However, we do know that there is a parabolic relationship in the temperature between T0 and T1. This relationship is given by the equation T0 is equal to T1 plus the heat generation, the length of the material is square, divided by 2 times the thermal conductivity of this material. This is given by equation 3.48 from the textbook. Notice that, however, to find the value of T0, we need to know first the value of T1. The value of T1 can be obtained by using the thermal resistances. So we could say that the value of the flux is equal to the difference between temperatures between T1 and T infinity and the addition of the resistances. So we could say LB, AB, plus 1 over H. Notice that this that you could do this relationship between T1 and T2, since we already know 2, or between T1 and T infinity. By solving for T1, we could find that, that this value is equal to 115 Celsius. Therefore, we could plug it in into this equation, and we could find that, that the value of T0 is equal to 140 Celsius. Notice that the temperatures between the surfaces of T0, T1, and T2 
change dependent on the behavior of the problem. The highest value of the temperature is at the insulated surface, T0, at 140. The lowest value is at T2, which is the one being cooled down by the fluid. Please go back and make sure to do the calculations and verify all these values.